Right, right. And what about a mother who has a child who's very, very sensitive, you know, out of the womb, and she's overwhelmed, and she shuts this baby out, and this baby grows up to be a very emotionally sensitive child, an adolescent. What is happening there? What is the sensitivity? And is there anything that mothers can do to help a child who's sensitive? Well, the research shows that more babies are born neurologically sensitive or sensitive to stress than we've ever known before. And what that means is that there's no gene for mental illness. There's no gene for any other form of mental illness other than schizophrenia and bipolar. There is some genetic connection. Otherwise, it has to do with um, stress regulation. So babies who are born more sensitive, and sensitivity is a gene that's passed down generationally and genetically. Um, so uh, that sensitivity to stress, the, the research shows that when mothers are emotionally and physically present um, in the first three years, it neutralizes the expression of that gene. So that baby has as good a chance of growing up emotionally healthy as a baby born without that, that sensitivity gene. But that sensitivity to stress means that baby is, if if not provided with sensitive empathic nurturing, more likely to develop things like anxiety, depression, ADHD, personality disorders. Um, and so, you know, there's something we can do about it, which is we need to be as present as possible if we have a sensitive baby. And what do those sense neurologically sensitive babies look like? They're harder to soothe when they're born. They're the babies who the mothers say, I'm losing my mind, my baby, I can't put them down for even a minute. They cry all the time. They're basically babies that are completely overwhelmed by the world they're born into. Uh, sight, sound, smells, touch, everything uh, kind of is a shock to them. And the only thing that comforts them is the presence of the person who is their entire universe, which is their primary attachment figure. So when we leave a sensitive baby in daycare, or when we leave a sensitive baby with an alternative caregiver, when they're very young, we basically are um, turning on that sensitive gene rather than turning it off. Right. Um, and those babies, as I said, are more likely later on to develop things like anxiety, depression, and mental illness. I have to say that this piece of information uh, personally uh, almost takes the pressure off because you never know what's going to happen, what kind of child you're going to have. And knowing that I can have an emotionally sensitive child, and if I'm just there for them, if in those three first, um, you know, more demanding years, I help them through their emotions, they're going to become resilient. So, you know, there's always a fear, I'm sure, that parents have of, you know, what will be with my child, and uh, you want them to be strong and uh, and have good mental health, uh, you know, be fulfilled. And knowing that you have such an impact, even if the genetics are um, that the child is sensitive, I think that's amazing. And I think that really shifts the mental illness paradigm, understanding that these mental illnesses are not just genetic, but it's genes and environment. And that interaction brings about um, these mental disorders. So I think that's uh, really important to know.